super cool. Another local business, Food in the Nude, they do gluten-free, dairy-free. We're going to kind of ruin the dairy-free with the ice cream, but got some chocolate, warmed up chocolate donuts. Put that back. Let's see if we can do this. Man. Chef, what kind of ice cream is this? Vanilla bourbon, I believe. Is this Little Bear? Vanilla bourbon. There we go. My name's Brittany and I'm short as f <laughs> Yeah. All right, our next guest you may have seen on the channel months ago, actually last summer with the financial chats the ladies were discussing, looks a little different. This is Brittany. Can you explain why you look a little different? Because you shocked the hell out of all your friends in the last few months. Um, probably because I went from 215 pounds down to 140 in less than a year. Wow. Yes, let's just stop and slow clap that one. Now, are you going to explain how you did it? Because it's probably not what everybody else thinks like it's, it's not some Instagram fad. What did you do to get healthier? I did the complete opposite of what everybody told me to because I tried the conventional methods. I was in the gym three, four hours a day, six days a week. I counted every macro I ate. If it was a piece of rice, it was weight. If it was chicken, it was weight. I counted everything. And in six months, I lost four pounds doing that. And that was it. That's and not a really good rate of return. Yeah, no, and I got so frustrated and I was so done. And then I started using my time to research. So if I was at work, I was listening to podcasts or audiobooks by doctors. Not the typical doctors that everybody else agrees with and listens to. I was learning about people who had different disorders that aren't really talked about quite often, um, insulin resistance, stuff like that. Yes. And all of the research that I did led back to everything I was dealing with. So then I started with intermittent fasting. I started with 16 and eight hours a day. Um, I would wake up in the morning, I would go to work, I would have nothing but green tea in the morning till about lunchtime. Um, and then I would have some lunch and then nothing for snacks in the afternoon other than potentially a protein shake. And then I would go home, make dinner for my family, have dinner, and then nothing but water again until about lunch the next day at work. And I started out that way. And then I slowly, as I learned more and more, um, started cutting out processed foods and sugars until I got to the point where, and a lot of people are gonna hate on it, a lot of people are gonna hate on the fact that when you say the word keto, mm. they lose their ever loving minds. My idea of keto and what the majority of people's version of keto is a completely different thing. Huge misconception about what true I keto is. I was not sitting and eating bacon dipped in mayo covered in cheese. <laughs> that is what the general society seems to think keto is. I was eating, I was going to my local butcher and buying fresh steak. I was getting shrimp and I was getting chicken and I was eating that with vegetables, peppers, onions, mushrooms, asparagus, broccoli. So a just, really full rounded meal. Yes, but I wasn't eating, nothing was processed. Nothing was full, of, there was no sugar. Nothing out of a box, nothing no, pre-made, yeah. pre -made, yeah. I was cooking everything I ate other than, and honestly for the first 30 days, I would not go out to eat to a restaurant and not because I felt like I couldn't. I was just, if I was gonna do this, I was gonna do it the right way and I was gonna give it 100% before I would say that it failed. So for the first 30 days, everything that went into my body was cooked by me. And so I started dropping weight like you you wouldn't imagine. For the first time in my life, it came with ease. I wasn't going to the gym anymore. To be completely honest, I had stopped going to the gym. I was tired um, from starting a new job and being a mom and everything else in the world. So I took a break from the gym after burnout and I just focused solely on my diet. And in the first four months, I dropped 40 pounds. Wow. Oh, wow. And like, and I did would, you feel bad? Like, was it was it too quick? No, I felt great. It was it was everything I wanted because the faster I was losing weight, the more motivated I was to keep it there up. Because finally, I found something that worked. After years of trying everybody else's methods and everything that everybody wanted me to do. I found something that worked for me. So I would go to work, I would come home, I would cook some, I, I ate ribeye steak like nobody's business. That was my favorite food Sounds for the longest terrible. time, right? Everybody's like, oh, keto's so bad, you're so deprived, you can't have carbs. 
I ate steak with shrimp and peppers and onions and mushrooms <laughs> six days a week. What most like, of you would love to order if you went out to a restaurant. Yeah, and I was just, I happened to be a semi-decent cook, so I was cooking it at home by myself, or for myself. And that's what I was eating. And then after the first 30 days, I started kind of figuring out which restaurants I could go to and where I could get a clean source of protein and some veggies. If I was going out, somebody wanted to go for a burger, I would ask for my burger on a bed of shredded lettuce instead of a bun. And I would eat it. I I don't like lettuce wrapped burgers. I call them handheld salads. So I got my salad in a bowl and I ate it with a fork and a knife. (laughs) So uh, yeah, that's kind of what worked for me. I've since gotten back into the gym because I mean, I won't say the gym isn't important by any means, because it is. You can drop weight like crazy, but you're still not gonna be happy. You're still gonna have the aesthetic you want because you're not gonna have any muscle either. If you just wanna be skinny, if you just wanna be a stick, then yeah, diet's all you need. But if you want to be a fully rounded out healthy person and have the physique you want, then yes, you are gonna have to go to the gym and build some muscle. Cool. I love how you you came back at the end because you basically said, I had to figure, I had to, you took the responsibility to make that change in your life. You did all the research, tried what everybody else said. Then you're like, no, no, I have to work for me, not what someone else says works. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, if you guys have any other questions about like stuff like that, uh, reach out and we'll, we can get Brittany back on it another time. But I want to ask her one question because car group here, it's only March. How, how, how much are you dying to get that car out? If you remember, she's got the Alpha 4C that we did the video on. It's one of our most watched videos. I did the most depressing thing the other day. Ooh. I checked the weather for the rest of March. Just to see if there was a day you could pull your car out. I have a history of... Well, when I had the Camaro, I had a history of having it out by the 1st of April every year. It's just that was that was the rule. It was a Camaro. So, But with the Alpha, I... You're going to get into a lot of trouble if you take that out. We, I, I try to wait a little bit till it's, it's actually nice and weather appropriate out. I would still like to have it out by the first, second week of April. I, I miss, I need octane therapy. Like there's just, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I, I need it. I miss it. Sorry guys. She's taken. Um, so I looked at the weather report and we don't have a single positive temperature until after April 1st. And I was, I was crushed. I was was like, I shouldn't have did that because I don't normally look at the weather. I'm a get ready, go outside and hope for the best kind of person. So when I looked at the weather and saw that it's going to be a bit into April before I can get that car out, it wasn't a good day for me. All right. She's going to have tears right away. So we're going to end it there. (laughs) Thanks, Brittany. Appreciate you coming on. For sure.